Hello, um, my name is Jane Waite and thank you for accepting our paper to WIPSKI. I'm presenting today on behalf of Paul Curzon, who's also at Queen Mary University of London, Carl Matton, who's at Sydney University in the LCT Centre, and Jim Donoghue, who's at Manchester Met. And I also need to say a quick thank you to the Institute of Coding, who've provided a little bit of funding to help us with this. So before we get kind of into the meat of things, I would like you to think what you already know about semantic waves and I'd like you to jot it down if you can or just at least make a mental note. So what do you already know about semantic waves? For me, I wouldn't classify myself as an expert, that's Carl Matton, um, but I've kind of got some experience. I'm not completely new to it. I've done some research in the area, but I'm still learning around it. OK, so we call that unpacking, where we start to uh, think about what we already know about a topic. So let's think about now our rationale for the study. So there's limited research on the pedagogy to teach computing in schools. And however, unplugged approaches have become popular, but the effectiveness of unplug unplugged approaches in terms of research there's been mixed results and we want to find out more about that so we want to understand why some unplugged activities are maybe more effective than others and we're using Carl Matton's legitimation code theory LCT as a as a way to analyze this and what LCT does it provides um, a method to understand what makes a good learning experience and we're building on our earlier research and today's study where we that we're reporting on we're going to use semantic profiling to review and improve two case study lessons but what does that all mean semantic wave semantic profiling so semantics is one dimension of LCT and it can be used to check to analyze the changes in a learning episode or a learning activity over time and there are two further things we need to think about when we're doing this and that's the density the semantic density and the semantic gravity semantic density relates to the complexity of the knowledge and the semantic gravity relates to the dependency on the context so if we try to remember it's about complexity of knowledge the language we might be using and the dependency on context so whether it's in an everyday context or it's in an abstract description so to analyze a lesson we using semantics we profile it and some profiles have got waves and some profiles don't have waves. So let's look at that in more detail. So I'm going to build up a semantic profile, but from a kind of a blank sheet. So we have a graph and we have time passing along. That's for the learning experience. If I were to place a, an activity on the profile, if I was going to profile it, and if it were to go at the bottom, what that would mean is that it was easier to understand because it had weaker semantic density or, and stronger semantic gravity. But what does that mean? What does that mean in practice? Well, what it means is things that uh, the learner can more easily understand because it uses everyday language so that's the density is weak. And it also uses concrete and specific contexts. On the other hand, I might put the activity high on the semantic profile. What does that mean? That means it's harder for the learner to understand. It's got stronger semantic density, but weak gravity. But again, what does that mean? Well, what that means is we're using very technical language. So dense language, so the semantic density is strong, but we're using and we're using it in an abstract way. So it's not applied to a particular con concept. And let's start to now look at what a, what a wave might look like in terms of that. So what that might mean is that we start off talking about a concept in an abstract way using very technical language. Then we next ask the learner or we unpack what that means in terms of um, concrete context and simple languages. Then we kind of get to the bottom 
And at the bottom, it's this idea, it's more easy to understand. And we might use tasks such as unplugged demos, metaphors, examples, and diagrams before then we move back up the wave where we do something called packing or repacking. And that's where we link the concrete, grounded everyday language back up to these abstract ideas. So then we're back up the top. So that's what a semantic profile is. However, not all profiles wave. This is an example of a, of a flat line, a high flat line. And so some semantic um, profiles, they show us that rather than going back down to an example, that we remain at the top, just talking about abstract concepts and technical language. And I'm sure we've all been in lectures where that's what it's been like. It's just been all theory. On the other hand, I've been in plenty of um, primary classrooms where there's been no theory or technical language. There's just been lots of concrete examples and everyday language, but it's not linked back up to what we're actually trying to teach children about. Another kind of profile that you might see are these escalators. So it's this idea that we might start describing an abstract concept and then we do an activity but we don't take it back up to link our understanding with the original concept. And we just have lots and lots of escalators that follow one after another. Another way to, an, another kind of profile that you might see is where you have a wave within waves. And so here's an example of this and where overall you can see that there is a wave shape from B1 down to the bottom kind of thing in the middle of the graph and then back to B6. But then within it there are lots of smaller waves. So we've kind of talked about the context which is um, unplugged computing. We've talked about the um, about semantics and the way that you use profiles. So let's look at how we've applied this for our particular study. So the method that we used was um, a simplified profiling technique. So what we mean by that is that everything is comparative to everything else. So we've not got saying that if you do X, then that means it's high, or if you do Y, then that means it's, it's low on the um, graph where it's all comparative and what we did is we profiled two case studies a student facing lesson and a teacher CPD lesson but what we added in terms of our new as in terms of contribution is three simple questions to help us and we hope in the future others um, to be able to review profiles and those questions were does it wave? Is it a wave? How high and how low do you go? But obviously that's in comparison to other things that are happening in the lesson. And who is packing? So who is doing the unpacking and who is doing the repacking? And from that, we then created new profiles. So let's look at the two case studies. So the first case today was um, on an activity called the teleporting robot. And what we're teaching here is about the, the concept of algorithms. And we're using a self um, working trick in order to teach students about it. And I'm not going to go into the detail of, of what the actual lesson plan looks like um, outside of reviewing the semantic profile. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the semantic profile that was drawn for this lesson, which used the teleporting robot. So we're on slide 16. If any of you have actually got the Google Slides open, then you can be following along with me. We're on slide 16 and I'm going to show you how we might use our three questions in order to review the semantic profile. And I'm going to describe the profile and how that relates to the actual learning activity. So if we can see on this is the profile. You can kind of see, is it a wave? Well, it kind of looks a bit like a wave, but it's got a very steep drop here from T1 down T2 to T3. So it's not 
quite a wave. So if I was going to be kind of say it kind of giving it a, um, a green for yes, it is an amber for mm, mm, not quite and a red for no, it's not, then I'd probably give it an amber. So I give it, is it a wave? I'm going to give it an amber sticker. And that's mainly because we've got this big drop, but then it does kind of start to wiggle its way back up to the top for T6. In terms of how high and how low it goes, then it does, it starts off with a, um, um, uh, an abstract concept is introduced, the learning outcome. Then the teacher talks about the aim of the trick and the fact that it's about to, uh, it's in order to understand algorithms. The teacher then does the trick and then it returns as the teacher then explains why that is so. So how high and how low does it go? I think again, that's that looks like it, it, it does drop quite a long way and we go all the way down to a practical activity. So it's amber, maybe green. I'm gonna kind of put it between that. Now in terms of who is packing, we have two choices in terms of packing. It can be the student or it can be the teacher. And here, everything is being done by the teacher. And I'm gonna give that a green because we're, we're thinking or we're theorizing that actually it's the student who needs to do the packing and based on this little review of the um, profiling of the activity I can start to then look at how we changed it. So this is an activity that Paul Curzon delivers and um, he did the profiling and you can see what changes he made. And the first thing that he did is he changed that very um, that kind of bungee drop to have this little kink in it so he's got more of, um, of a curve coming down and he achieved that by having another step where he explained he provided a simple explanation of an algorithm in order to address that and then the other thing that he did was rather than just himself doing the trick the learner actually did the trick and then the learner as well explained the meaning of the algorithm so now in terms of is it a wave I think I'm feeling a bit more confident that it's looking like a wave so I think I'm moving that towards green that how high and how low it goes it's still actually got the same depth but the fact that the learner is doing the trick I'm feeling maybe that would be green and we're definitely green now in terms of who is packing so you can see how we've changed the semantic profile and we've made it more of a wave shape and I'm not convinced actually whether yeah I think it still is green orange in terms of how high and low it goes but we've definitely improved now in terms of who is packing and that's basically the process so we had this um, activity called the teleporting robot we created the semantic profile based on the activities. We then asked, is it a wave? How high and low it, would it go? Who is packing? And then we changed the activity by having this staged unpacking by learners and more repacking steps again by learners. And that's effectively the process that is used. Now, if we had time, and in fact, let's try it. Let's go and let's try it. What, if you are um, watching this video, what I'd like you to do is to um, just pause the video and go and get hold of this set of slides. And then what you're going to do is you're going to answer the three questions for this um, profile. Now, this profile is as the activity was nearly presented. So what happened was as Paul was about to present it, he forgot to do the beginning part of the lesson. Um, I have to say I've been I've done exactly the same myself in lessons where I get in a bit of a fluster, particularly in online lessons. And then I just kind of go straight into the activity rather than contextualizing it. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to use these little sticky docs. You kind of pull them across and decide if we had if he had actually implemented it as this um, profile, what answers would you have given it? So I'm assuming that you're stopping and then you're starting again. Okay, so I'm assuming now that you've you kind of stopped the video and then you're coming back to it. And we've just got a few minutes to talk about the, the second um, case study. The second case study, again, I'm not going to go into it in details, but if you want to find out about it, there are there's a, a link here. Um, and basically it's explaining variables using um, a physical computing box activity where students have boxes and then um, the values that are being assigned 
to the variables are these pieces of paper which represent green, red, green and red, and it's a, it's a swap activity. Um, and it's really very much about things like assignment. And as well as the books being just a books, it also has a, a built-in photocopier and a built-in shredder. Now, I'm not going to go into details of the um, lesson, apart from we're going to look again at the semantic profile. This is the semantic profile for the original plan of the box variable activity. And as you can see, um, or, or in fact, if I stop now and I say, if you are watching this on the video, then you can follow along with the um, with the Google Slides. And again, you can decide whether you think it's a wave, whether it's how high and how low, who is packing. I'm just going to wait, assuming that you've done that. And then I'm going to explain myself. So if I were going to be doing the green, amber and red, is it a wave? Well, it is a wave, but it's one of these wave within waves. So I think, yeah, it's waving. So we've got an overall wave and then we've got these waves within waves. Again, we've got how high and how low does it go? Then I can see what's happening is we've got an introduction of the learning outcomes. We've got this description by the teacher. The red means it's the teacher. The red says uh, the teacher explains it's a box with a shredder and a copier. And they, then what they do is they show an example program. So they're changing the context, but the context is more complicated than the role play context because it's actually explaining the variable activity but based on an on a program where it shows how the variables the values are being swapped between the variables um, and actually straight away I'm going to answer this this last question of who is packing well everything seems to be the teacher there is some acting out by some of the learners, but actually the learners are not doing the packing and unpacking themselves. So I'm going to make that red. And how high and how low does it go? I suppose there's not very much of a stage return here. Um, I'm going to kind of go, I often seem to go green and orange for how, how and how high and how low. So let's see what Paul actually did in terms of changing, because he did this activity and he then he went through those questions and this is what his new version of the profile was. So the first thing that I can see that's different is here, we've got the student is summarising the stage return. So we've got a new green bit that's here. So we've got a stage return so that I've got more of a curve coming back here. But I still haven't got very much in terms of the um, of the of the, t of the of the students being involved in the um, in the uh, uh, the role play activity. Now, Paul delivered this new version, but then he reviewed what he delivered and created a third version, which is for the future. And there's far more green. And the reason for that, what he's got is he's got students who are involved with the role play um, and they do a Q&A during the role play so that then they're being involved with the packing and unpacking. So let's look at the summary of this. So. Um, we asked the three questions and what the changes were, were that the learners repacked more during the role play, which was, if we just use this here, that was this section here. So we've got that stage return and the students being involved. So that's this final repacking. And then we had this further extension as well, which you can't see on this particular, um, on the, on the, uh, profile itself but basically he added as well to the end the idea that the students would add further waves by using dry running on the program itself to repeat the role play. So let's have a little quick conclusion. So we profiled two lessons to increase our understanding, understanding of the unplugged computing lessons and I it is very much like you're kind of lifting the lid on on the engine of what is driving the lesson you're looking at the mechanics that are under there and we did two we reviewed two particular lessons the teleporting robot and the box variable 
And we use these three questions or we propose the use of these three questions to help us review and then redraw the profiles. And what we're kind of suggesting is that semantic profiling could be part of teacher training. And we've kind of provided evidence of the theoretical application of semantic waves in using unplugged activities to teach computer science. But from this, we've, of course, we're just on a research journey. And our next steps are going to be to compare the effects of these different profiles on teaching and learning. So we're kind of proposing, if I go back to say slide 21, we're proposing that this original plan of the box variable activity, we're proposing that it won't be as effective as say this final plan where we've got a more of a, a wave and where we have got um, a greater um, involvement of the students in terms of packing and repacking but we need to evidence that um, so we're uh, again on slide 26 what we're planning on doing is on profiling following on activities uh, we're thinking about profiling prim and other instructional approaches and investigating further who repacks and the impact of it and we've actually started doing teacher professional development on semantic profiling and we're getting some already some really interesting kind of responses from teachers who are or who are taking to it and enjoying it um, but just as a because that's time is up what I'd like you to do because I got you to unpack at the beginning. I'd like you to repack now you're at the end. And the way that I'd like you to repack is on slides 27 through to 30, depending on your surname. Then what you do is you pull in um, a sticky note and you now repack your new knowledge by telling us what you know about semantic waves. And if possible, we'd like you to include an example. And that example could be this um, presentation about our research in terms of what did unpacking look like, what did the activity look like, and then what did the repacking look like in terms of semantic waves. So thank you very much for listening to um, about semantic waves and our study. And if you'd like to find out more, then you can look at the LCT website. They're a really lovely uh, community and they're very welcoming and very active. And you can also take part in the teleporting robot activity, uh, which is online. Um, I didn't tell you about it before, because if I had, then you'd have just been playing with that for the whole lecture. But anyway, thanks very much and I um, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>